One thing I want to point out is that just because algorithms are consistent, that doesn't make them fair. You can have an algorithm that consistently applies a biased view of candidates, and like, that's not fair, even though it's consistently applying those rules across all of your applicants. And so when I look at algorithms like this head on, when I'm not squinting and I'm not looking out of the corners of my eyes, there are some red flags that show up that indicate to me that there's likely some bias creeping in, a lot of bias creeping in. So the first of these red flags is that this approach assumes that we can characterize success. The second is that it puts the onus of success entirely on the individual. And finally, because the data that we have is limited to data within our own company, we can only learn from false positives. We can't learn from false negatives. And by that I mean we can only learn from candidates that were flagged as positive and wound up not being successful. We can't learn about candidates that were flagged as not promising and wound up going on to other companies to be quite successful. So when we're modeling success, sort of uh, this step of the process, um, what, are, what are we usually doing? So usually, uh, success is captured um, in things like retention. It's captured in things like promotion history. It might include information from, uh, like ratings from end of year review process if there is um, you know, such a process. And something that I want to emphasize is that this is just one picture of success. Somewhere, at some point, someone or a group of people decided that this is what success looks like, and it said to this algorithm, this is what we're looking for. But there is no perfect workplace with perfect hiring policies, perfect raises and promotion methods, and a culture that welcomes all people equally. So when you point your algorithm at the successful employees in your company, really what you're trying to do, you're not, trying to, you're not telling it to try to pick out the best candidates. What you're doing is you're telling it to try to reproduce your biased, unfair, and inconsistent method of doling out success. And if we look at almost all companies, we see diminishing diversity at the top, right? So these employees that are marked as successful. And that lack of diversity trickles down into our recruiting and hiring algorithms, it trickles down into this very initial filtering layer, and that's how we get algorithms like Amazon's that don't like women. It's how we get algorithms that don't like black people. And this isn't inadvertent. I get really, really mad when people talk about bias in algorithms like this entering inadvertently. Right? This algorithm is working exactly as it was designed to do. It learned exactly the thing that it was supposed to, which is who is going to be successful at this company and who is not. And I think what we need to do, what we have to do, is that when we look at algorithms like this and we notice that they are biased against women, we notice that they are biased against black people, is we have to realize that when we look at those algorithms, we are taking a hard look in the mirror at our company's own culture. But often we don't do that. That's really uncomfortable. <laughs> so we table our algorithm and we try again, refusing to listen to what the algorithm is trying to tell us. Or we don't look at the algorithm at all because we don't want to know.